from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, subscribers, and welcome to another Ropecast, our podcast about everything to do with the English language. Hi, everyone. This is Peter Tischer. And I'm Roger Charlton. Hi, Roger. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. And you? I'm okay. Good. You know, yesterday I was just having a cup of coffee and I heard a Rolling Stones track and I thought, the Rolling Stones were popular when I was young. <laughs> They're still going. <laughs> yeah, you know they got a new blues album out now. I, I didn't know that, no. Yeah, yeah, that's, they, they do. It sounds pretty good. Uh, although I like the old stuff. Uh, speaking of old stuff, I mean, they've been around a while and I've been wondering for a while, where does their name come from? Oh. Rolling Stones. I mean, it can't be from rock and roll, can it? I think it's from the regular saying in English, a rolling stone gathers no moss. A rolling stone gathers no moss. Yeah. Uh huh. And people argue about what it means, actually. Does it mean uh, settle down and you'll make something of your life? Or does it mean don't stay where you are because the opportunities elsewhere? Uh, we, we have a saying like that. Um, wer rastet, der rostet. So somebody who rests will rust <laughs> yes meaning you know if you don't move if you don't if you're not dynamic you will will eventually not succeed right. and uh, that's what it means yeah. for us it's important it's, for germans because there are quite a lot of these uh, sayings proverbs that actually carry some kind of cultural content you know a value system is mm -hmm. there behind them got another example <laughs> well some of them i think are pretty international if you say um Rome wasn't built in a day, then I think lots of languages would have a similar expression. Take some time to build something great. We have yeah. that too. Rome yeah. wurde nicht an einem Tag erbaut. And probably some of these things have been handed down through the centuries, since Roman times even. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the things we think are fresh are actually very old. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sure there are some where you'll find it in one language and one culture and not in even a neighboring culture. Like you just mentioned with with German, I'm sure there are some contrasts. Um, I have one saying in German that I'm still looking to find in any other language. Uh -huh. um, Dienst ist Dienst und Schnaps ist Schnaps. Oh. So, not very literally translated, work is work and a drink is a drink. Meaning, <laughs> you should separate your workplace activities from your private activities. Ah, yes. Now, that really is very German. I think so, too. And I have not heard that in any language that I know. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm, I don't speak 20 languages, <laughs> but I've been asking around. I don't know it in English. I don't know anything in French. Nothing. Well, let's see if any of our listeners can come up with something for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm still looking for that. But do yeah. you have anything in English where you would say, I haven't heard that in very many other languages? I think um, a very, very British one would be good fences make good neighbors. What does that mean? It means we, we value privacy or privacy, as some people would call it. Uh huh. OK. You know, if you want to have your own independent life, fence yourself off from everything else, everybody else. That says something about British individualism. Yeah. I think you pay a lot of attention to being private people, yeah. to being individuals. Think of what you see in the movies. You know immediately if the suburb is in the United States or in Britain. In the United States suburb, um, you drive along the street and you can see everything. You can see right into people's houses because it's all open. Mm -hmm. uh, a bit of grass in front of the house, but very often no real boundary marker at all. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Britain, you certainly see where one bit of land ends and the next begins. There is a wall, there's a fence, there's a hedge, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. sometimes very high. Right. So I so think this is, you know, this is a value. This, this, this should be a cultural value. I think yeah. so, too. There may be others. One thing I keep thinking about, speaking of America, one you hear very often about, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, we have that. You have that in yeah, Great yeah, Britain, yeah. but we don't have that in Germany. Uh -huh. So it would mean some, something like take care of yourself and yeah. you won't need any medical that's right. Help. And scientifically, we know this is a pretty good advice anyway. <laughs> Apples are very healthy. Yeah, but that's something I don't, I don't think we have that. And I don't know that in any other language. So it's a little bit also, again, about individualism, isn't it? You, you do things for yourself. You don't rely okay. yeah. on a community or yeah. on professionals to take care of you. Mm -hmm. You, as an individual, 
are responsible. So that's a value in that saying. That's true, yeah. Isn't it? You know, one that pe people in Germany often know, even if they don't have much English, is an Englishman's home is his castle. Right. We usually quote it as, my home is my castle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the variations on that. And that too says something about not only what British people might think, but also what people from outside think the British are like. Mm -hmm. you know, however humble your origins, however humble your place of residence, house, flat, etc., Mm -hmm. uh, this is mine. This is you know, right. part of my identity. Right. So these sayings are not, um, they are not innocent, are they? No, no, no. They express something. I just thought of another thing. I mean, though we've got the same value, we would say in English, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. You know, people are envious of their neighbors. And in German, of course, you mentioned cherries in the neighbor's garden. It's not not mm -hmm. the grass, because, you know, we have lawns in Britain, so everyone mm -hmm. has grass. Right. And you can grow cherries here because the climate is a little bit more favorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I admit. <laughs> <laughs> so these can be revealing in different ways. We ought to talk some more about that. Yeah. Um, let's put that off to the next podcast. How about that? that? Yeah. Okay. So, dear listeners, this is a good reason to tune in again, to download again in two weeks. Bye for now. Have a nice day. Bye for me, too. Listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.